like to invite now Marta from ESRF. Thanks for joining us today. Um, you are working in ID31 ESRF. Can you also tell us something else about you and your research, please? Yeah, so good afternoon or good morning or good evening, depending on where you're located. Uh, so thank you for inviting me. That's a pleasure for me to represent a bit the ESRF, is a European synchrotron. I'm working at the ID31 Beamline, which is the Beamline dedicated to high energy investigation of buried interfaces. Uh, that's a bit like a fancy title, but what we do a lot, we work on energy materials, uh, which means uh, we are working a lot on batteries or fuel cells or electrolyzers, so devices that are, let's say, helping the energy transition that we are uh, witnessing nowadays. Uh, my background is mainly on uh, battery characterization, but since I joined the ESRF, I'm widening a bit my on one side, my characterization portfolio, so I can look at the devices on dif in different ways, but also like I, I'm transitioning, transition, I'm widening my uh, expertise from batteries to other electrochemical systems. So that's a bit of my background. Okay, thank you. Um, so why do you think basic sciences are important to society? The way I see it is like, we have a problem. We are like lost in a forest. And what we can do is just like decide to go one direction and just go straight this direction, go just walk the same direction. This is a bit what applied science I see that is doing. So they just go on one direction. They see that is going well and that's fine. They keep going on the same direction. What basic science can do is like having a compass and a map and deciding where to go because we do an experiment, fundamental experiment, and we can say, okay, look, this is going better, but maybe if we take like this other path, then we'll get out of the forest in a better way, in a more efficient way. Uh, so for me, basic science is like what we have to do if we don't want to go back to, to solve a problem, let's say, within in a blindly way. So the, you are also reflecting the importance of failures, no? as it was mentioned before, to advance in science, no? Sorry, can you repeat? Because I that you are also reflecting on the importance of failures to, to also advance in science. No, that was also mentioned before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, also like uh, what Raffaello was uh, just saying, uh, the, the, that we need to share also our failures because otherwise we just keep making always the same mistake, just like different groups all over the world. So it's important to share like uh, not only the good results, but also bad results from which we can learn and which they don't always... They, they are not always bad results. Maybe we just need to look at them in a different way. Definitely. So if we talk about policymakers, uh, what can they do to help uh, research, fostering science, basic science, etc.? cetera? What, what is on their hands? Well, I think there is like a couple of things that can be done from policymakers. On one side is like recognizing a bit the whole, the importance of research, of basic research uh, and let's say, acknowledging the impact that we are having on society. We had like a lot of uh, presentation today on uh, the impact that uh, basic science is having on uh, culture, on uh, arts, uh, on society. So this would already help. The second thing is to, uh, I, I don't remember what I wanted to say, so I, I got lost, but uh, I think like policymakers, ah, that's what I wanted to say. If we if they look not only at, let's say, the, the short-term um, contract, let's say, so if they look not only at the next three to five years, but they would maybe make bad decision on the short terms, but which would lead to good decision on the long term. For example, spending money on research might be bad for your political career because you're, of course, spending money, but on the long term, like your region, your country, that it depend, doesn't matter at which level you're looking at, it will get a return of investment that you might not see because it might be on the next uh, political uh, term. So, but these are two things that maybe we should like ask poli uh, policymakers just to look a bit yeah. on Basically. a wider range. <laughs> Yeah, maybe they should see it as investing in research instead of spending in research. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Respect for the return to come. Yeah. And um, if we talk about uh, diversity and gender gap, 
So what can be done to build a more diverse scientific community, not only in terms of gender, but also nationalities, etc.? So I'm lucky I'm working uh, in, uh, at the ESRF, it's the European Synchrotron. So we uh, have uh, like, uh, we hire people from all over Europe, all over the world. Uh, we welcome people from different culture. Uh, we encourage people from different backgrounds to join us. Uh, but it's true that that's not easy. Uh, I don't remember who was mentioning the fact that uh, uh, if there are like, uh, for example, not many, uh, girls that are graduating from basic science, from hard, uh, like uh, from physics, from mathematics, from these uh, studies, we cannot ask to have like a uh, gender equality at uh, when when we are looking at postdocs or at uh, permanent positions. For me, what one thing that would that could help, and one thing that I hope that I'm uh, helping in is uh, creating like a kind of role models or like at least to have like to see that there are more people like you that can achieve what you want to achieve so if there's a young girl that is like that wants to do science and sees someone like a researcher who looks like them from not only gender but culture from background different backgrounds different uh, places and then you see that this person achieved what you want to achieve, then that would, I think, would help to have a more diverse uh, environment. Yeah, the, the importance of role models, of course. Yes. So we are a little bit tight on time, but I wouldn't want to leave without asking for your wishes on the scientific breakthrough. Uh, can you tell us something very briefly, please? I think we are like making a lot of uh, steps ahead in the energy transition, uh, like how to get rid of uh, internal combustion engine vehicles, like how to use uh, batteries and other energy storage system. What I really hope that we will uh, be witnessing soon is uh, a way to heal the damage that we did to the planet. Uh, for example, with uh, carbon dioxide capture and uh, uh, and uh, how to reuse the CO2 to create uh, other chemicals, uh, chemicals that we can use for other, for biofuels also, for example. So what, what I hope that we will be seeing in the next years is really like uh, devices that will, uh, will be able to capture CO2 and that we will be able to really heal our planet.